Hey, Billy here from Strong's Adventures. Somebody had asked me about my cooking setup. Well, today we're going to go ahead and show you a review of my setup. Be right back. Okay, this is my firebox. It measures 36 inches by 25 inches, 8 inches deep, and it's 8 inches off the ground. I have handles on each side. Also, have a piece of square tubing that I stick the stand up poles in. They're equipped with a screw so that I can tighten that up so that the poles don't spin. Alright, this is my small swing out grill. It measures 16 inches by 16 inches. It has a piece of square tubing on the back with a bolt on it so that you can tighten it up on your stand up rods so that it won't spin. And you can lock it in that way. This is my large swing out grill. It measures 18 by 24 inches. It also has a square tube that you stick on the upright bars and the screw so that you can tighten it down where it doesn't swing. Okay, these are my two upright poles. They have the horseshoe for my crossbar. This is the crossbar. These pieces of square tubing go on the uprights so that I can put my swing out grill. It makes them really easy to swing that way. And this bag holds my hooks. Alright, give me just a second and we'll show you how all this goes together. Okay, to begin with, I take my upright, I have my swing grill suit in here, put the upright through, take one of my swings, put it on the bottom, tighten it up just a little bit so that it doesn't fall out. I place it down in the hole. I'll do the same thing with the other one. Put my upright through. Put this piece on the bottom. Tighten it up a little bit so that it doesn't fall out. Okay, next thing will be I'll get the hooks and we'll be doing that. Okay, now it's time to get the crossbar and put the hooks on. always like the hooks to be facing the same direction. Some people put them on and don't make sure that they're going the same direction. But that's what I do. I also always have my hooks facing towards the side that I'm going to be standing on most of the time. So, we have our hooks on. We'll slide this through. Slide it through this side. Now I'll turn these where it pinches the crossbar and I'll tighten up my bolt down here on the bottom. This is also the time when you get your crossbar leveled up and your uprights level. Tighten that bolt on the bottom. And I tighten this bolt on the bottom. That's pretty much it. That gives us our cooking area. You can swing these in and out. Tighten them up. You can raise them up to use 
as a table. Just like that. Same as this side. This side will do the same thing. And these are actually really good to grill with and I really like this setup. We'll be back in a minute. We're going to get a fire going in this thing and you can see how my fire works. Okay, I've got my chimney full of coals going. I'm going to go ahead and dump those in here in the bottom. And we'll just get a nice little fire going down here. crisscross them and while the fire is still small I'll go find some smaller wood and I'll put that in there and we'll get it going and we'll be back as soon as I get a good fire going okay some of the accessories I use are a pot lifter slash lid lifter this is actually not one of my favorites, but it is what I have with me today. So, we'll get by with using it. You also want to have a whisk broom. This is to get the ashes off the top of your Dutch ovens. Regular old grill grate wire brush. And you're going to want one of these. It's just a flat shovel. Now my other flat shovel broke, but what I'll do is I'll take and I'll use a hole saw and drill holes in here so that when I'm getting the coals out of there, the ash will fall through. But I haven't done that yet. So there's two other important things that you really need. You need a pair of heavy duty welding gloves. I happen to have about 12 pairs of these. You also need a fire poker. This just happens to be a flattened over piece of EMT. Um, the set actually came with a really nice hook, but I left it one of the campsites we were at, so I don't have it anymore. Hey y'all, if y'all have any questions about any of this stuff that I'm doing or how I'm using it, leave me a comment down below. Please like, share, and subscribe and ring that bell okay I can't do a showing of my setup without cooking something so today we're gonna cook some stuffed peppers bacon wrapped stuffed peppers from Bucky's yeah everybody from Texas knows what Bucky's is we picked these up on the way back from Lollapalooza they're pretty daggum good so stay tuned and we'll get those on the grill and we'll get some shots of that. Alright, so we're going to swing this grill in, get her warm a little bit, and then we're going to put our bacon wrap stuffed jalapenos from Bucky's on there. Probably should have let the grill get a little hotter first, but we're kind of running out of daylight, and this is what we're gonna do. I can assure you that it is super hot. All right, we'll get back to you when those get done. All right, they're starting to get a little bit seared on one side. Let's give them a little flip. burn these bad boys. We just want the bacon crispy. The beautiful thing about this, if it gets too hot, I can always raise that up. Ooh, don't that look good? I wish y'all could smell it. It smells awesome. Where's my bacon on that one? Where's the cream cheese on that one? 
Dang. Hold together, baby. When I make these, I normally put a toothpick in them. Thank y'all for watching this video. Like, share, and subscribe. Ring that bell. Um, if you have any questions about my cooking setup, like I said, leave a question down in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. Now, we're gonna try some of our bacon wrap jalapenos right here. That's good. That's really good. Alright, I hope you liked the video and we'll catch you on the next one. Alright, let's take a peek at our chicken. I don't know.